there's a year old bull right there. It's a young bull. You don't, we don't see that very often around here, do we? This is the first week that I can remember getting more done than I anticipated getting done. I thought it would take me most of the week to get the entire upstairs painted. In the back of my head, I had plans to start on the upstairs flooring, but I didn't think I was gonna get to it. Not only was I able to get the entire upstairs painted, I was also able to get about half of the downstairs taping done while I was waiting for coats to dry upstairs. The drywall contractor's not gonna show up. I'm tired of talking about him. I'm just gonna finish the downstairs myself. After seeing how the upstairs turned out, I'm certain I can make the downstairs look just as good if not better. The master bedroom is where I started trying to figure out the texture that I'm putting on the entire house. I can see as I progressed through the upstairs into the downstairs how I got better at it. The differences aren't obvious, but I'm certain by this point that the downstairs should look really good. Our goal is to get the upstairs as close to livable so we can move a lot of our things from town into the bedrooms while still sleeping in the camp trailer. In order to get that done, I've got to get the flooring down. Over the last couple of years, I've been thinking about what flooring we would do, both upstairs and downstairs, that would tie in with the exterior siding as well as the theme that we have inside. I found a company a couple hours away that was selling a one by six tongue and groove flooring cut pine for a decent price. Now one by six pine isn't that special. As a matter of fact, using pine on the floor is not my first choice. It's a soft wood. It's gonna get banged up. But we've done this once before. By staining it and sealing it and letting it wear accordingly, it just looks unique and beautiful. But what's unique about this tongue and groove pine flooring is that it was ran through a mill with a radius blade. So it has what are called circle saw marks in it, or kerf marks, and that's unique. As a matter of fact, I've never seen circle sawn pine floors in a house before, but I have seen many other pine floors installed. When I saw that flooring, I had to have it, and I ran down and bought all that they had left, which was right about 350 square feet of flooring. That was basically enough flooring to do the hallway and the master bedroom.
what I think I'm going to do is rather than putting, rather than laying the floor right to the edge, I think I'm going to leave room for one more tread. But then the tread would match, match the same tread right here. So then it overhangs, it's going to overhang over the thickness of the board, probably like that. Do I center one down the hallway? Yeah, I and then go from there, this. or do I go off this wall and just go this way? So we're talking. Can I drill into this like I did last time? Um, do you know where the drill is? Uh, a find a hammer. Get, Use those nails. Yeah, you do hammer nails. <laughs> okay, then give us a minute. Let's talk, and I'll come help you. What? Give us a minute, please. Well, I don't want to try to find it. Either I do a, either I balance it yeah. between both sides. Yeah. Well, that's gonna be a pain, but it'll look better. Okay, that's why I asked uh, you know, you know. a skinny strip right here and, and solid right here. It's kind of, because it's rough, so I'm just kind of pushing into it. You know, if you really put it on there, then it's going to get in the cracks. And... I like it but it's not very dark I could do a second coat but you also have to remember it's overcast right now see to me it pops more so, so just imagine it's a little bit overcast imagine how much darker if that's that much darker how much darker it's gonna make the room it's gonna make the room a lot darker so we could, I could put the first coat on it Wipe it down and do a second coat. Oh, see. That right there. That's awesome. While I was away from home, I picked through the internet in the local areas looking to see if there was more wood that I could buy. I ended up finding somebody only 30 minutes away from us that was demoing an old machine shop. And they had about 5,000 board feet of 1 by 12 pine. It was about 75 year old wood, thought to be old growth pine by the owner. It was also local wood. I stopped and looked at it. Because of how it was used for shelving and different things, it was very straight. I bought everything he had. I told him I would buy anything else that he had. Because it's 75 years old, it has already oxidized and it's different than a tongue and groove that I already bought. But to me, the fact that it's somewhat local wood, the fact that it's being repurposed and being kept out of the dump, I'm willing to take the time to make it into the flooring for the bedrooms and anywhere else I can use it in the house. Because of the one by 12 width, I can use it for shelving in the pantry and in the closets as well. I pulled the nails out of it let Reed pick up the nails like he does with the magnet, and I set it aside. I'm installing the tongue and groove with a traditional trim nailer shooting a two and a half inch 16 gauge nail. I'm not using a groove nailer because the wood is not consistent enough. Our floor joists are 12 inches on center, so every 12 inches I'm putting two nails in. This wood should not move, cup, or go anywhere. I could not be happier with the way it looks. It really bummed me out that I was not able to get more of this wood. As I'm seeing the progress and working on the upstairs, it's ironic to me to think that we've gotten this far. 
My long-term memory is not the best. Frankly, my short-term memory isn't the best either. I have this theory that the long-term memory fades as a safety mechanism. I don't remember as much as I wish I did about my father. It seems the longer it's been since my father passed away, the more I forget. Now naturally I will never forget him or anybody else that was significant in my life that has passed on, but it seems to me like this is a way to help us progress through life versus staying stagnant in the memory of the hardships of our life. Now it's a bit ridiculous to compare the struggles of building our house to losing a loved one, but we've been through a lot over the last couple of years since we started building the house, and it's hard to imagine that we're as close as we are to finishing the house. I've had many, many days where I was not sure if this was ever gonna get finished, and I was not sure if I had the abilities or the energy or the health even to finish the house. I consciously told myself to do something, get something done, check something off of some list somewhere. By doing this over and over and over again, we are now at the point where we're painting and staining floors. I suppose the light at the end of the tunnel is not an oncoming train after all. I've said it before and I'll say it again, sometimes you just have to keep grinding. Then one day you'll look up and what seemed to be an unaccomplishable challenge is laying finished before you. I'm done for the week. I did everything I could to finish this. We were, we were, our plan was to finish the upstairs flooring and get the um, stain and uh, clear coat on it. But we are short, probably six or eight pieces. And the guy can't get this with the circle saw anymore, uh, but he can get just the regular um, tongue and groove that's flat. So over here against the wall where I'm short a few pieces, I'm just gonna have to scab that in there. And I don't think anybody will notice it. Uh, and then I'm gonna use the, uh, the, the stuff that I that bought from uh, the guy that was uh, tearing down the building. I'm gonna use that for the bedrooms. I'm gonna have to run that through the plane and cut it into uh, one by six strips and maybe even do a ship lap something like that i'm not going to do take the time to mill it into tongue and groove but anyway i'm, I'm just a flat exhaust and i'm not thinking straight i'm making some poor decisions with the wood here so i'm i'm going to go ahead and call it for the week first part of next week we'll stain this seal this and we're going to start moving stuff up here in preparations to be living full-time